Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Has been an average Joe for the people. And and credit card late fees just goes back into the long list of accomplishments that this administration has made for average Americans. But the key here is going to be translating and getting people to understand it, hear it, and it break through. Often, I think one of the biggest criticism is that, hey, you're giving us a bunch of things we didn't ask for, but that doesn't mean there are things and these are things that people need. And at a time when inflation is uh, inflation is high, you, the, the price of bacon and eggs is rising and milk is rising, being able to save 20 and $30 a month on credit card late fees when people are, their use of credit is so high. I think this is actually something that really impacts uh, really impacts so many different, not just not just low uh, low income Americans, but I would say also middle class and working Americans as well. Uh, but the real the real way that they're going to translate this into votes and opportunity and credit is how they translate this and fit this into the longer longer list of uh, narrative of all the various accomplishments they've made um, through this administration. Well, when we come forward, uh, we're talking with Cameron Trimble. He is the former Biden White House Director of Digital Engagement and currently is the founder and CEO of Hip Politics Incorporated, also host of the Hip Politics pod uh, podcast. I can't wait to join him on that. Uh, when we come forward, uh, we're going to get his take on uh, the Supreme Court wanting nearly $20 million in new funds to protect the justices and their homes, plus a first in college sports. Dartmouth's men basketball team votes to unionize. We're going to get Cameron's uh, take on all of this and more. You're listening to a more perfect union on KBLA Talk 1580. Out loud, out loud. KBLA Talk 1580. I'm Amber Payton. Here's the latest on the Black Information Network. An Eastern Washington school is under fire after encouraging students to dress up as African American slaves. The Spokesman Review reports Wilson Elementary School in Spokane issued a flyer highlighting an upcoming jazz music performance. The flyer invites families to, quote, take a trip from today way back to the times of slavery in America, end quote, and goes on to suggest that students dress up as slaves and hobos for the concert. The Spokane NAACP issued a statement accusing the school of encouraging blackface. The New York State Police Unit has its first ever African-American woman to hold the rank of captain. During a promotion event, Governor Kathy Hochul acknowledged that Lieutenant Trené Young is being promoted to captain. Hochul is pledging to have women make up at least 30 percent of the state police recruit classes by year 2030. That's the latest. I'm Amber Payton on your home for 24-7 News, the Black Information Network, and BINnews.com. Robert Half Research indicates 9 out of 10 hiring managers are having difficulty hiring. Robert Half is here to help. Their recruiting professionals use proprietary AI to connect businesses with highly skilled talent. At Robert Half, they know talent. Visit roberthalf.com today. <laughs> this is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. The Pac-12 Women's Basketball Tournament tips off Wednesday in Vegas. Number two seed USC will play Thursday night at six against the winner of Washington versus Arizona. UCLA, the number three seed, plays Thursday night at 830 against the winner of Utah versus Arizona State. In honor of Women's History Month, sports agent Nicole Lynn has been named as one of the most powerful women in sports by Sports Illustrated magazine. Lynn is the first black woman to represent a top three pick in the NFL draft. Lynn, a native of Tulsa, Oklahoma, is the agent for New York Jets defensive tackle Quentin Williams, the number three pick in 2019. Another one of Lynn's clients is Philadelphia Eagles quarterback Jalen Hurts. Last year, Lynn negotiated a five-year, $255 million contract for Hurts. Lynn is only 35. Get used to hearing her name a lot more in the sports industry. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson on KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA Talk 1580. Talk radio. That's music to you years. years. We're unapologetically progressive. KBLA Talk 58. Without the ones like you who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, 
you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional grade industrial supplies. Count on real time product availability and fast delivery. Call clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Attorney Joe Cordell. Business owners and professionals face special challenges in divorce court. In addition to everything else going on, they have to contend with allegations that they are earning more than they are, coupled with claims on their business or practice itself. Clients with assets depend on their divorce lawyer skills in these matters, and that's why it's so important to hire someone that has those skills. 1455 Frazee Road, Suite 1050, San Diego, California, 92108, CordellCordell.com. Hey, Californians, are you ready to make your home ownership dreams come through? The California Dream for All Shared Appreciation Loan Program might be for you. First-generation home buyers can get down payment and closing cost assistance along with a first mortgage to help you unlock the door of your new home. Applications open in April, so talk to an approved lender to see if you're eligible. Find out more at calhfa.ca.gov forward slash dream or call 877-922-5432. A message from the California Housing Finance Agency. Race, culture wars, political turf battles, criminal justice and injustice, the courts. These are the conversations you won't hear elsewhere. My guests are leading journalists, celebrities and sports figures, elected leaders and influencers. They aren't afraid to get into it and say the quiet part out loud. With Ariba Martin in real time, your commute just became the most engaging part of your day. Tune in weekdays from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. or find us on YouTube. Ariva Martin in real time when you want it straight, no chaser. Unapologetically progressive. KBLA Talk 151880. We've got your black. black. At KBLA Talk 1580, we do more than just talk. You gotta be my- we're unapologetically progressive and we don't black down. You're listening to a more perfect union on KBLA Talk 1580. I'm Dr. Nicordelai Corte and uh, so delighted uh, to be in conversation uh, with my friend uh, Cameron Tremble. He is the former Biden White House Director of Digital Engagement. He's also the current founder and CEO of Hip Politics Incorporated, also host of the Hip Politics Podcast. And he's here with us on this Super Tuesday uh, to help us uh, make it make sense. Uh, But it's not just Super Tuesday. It is a pretty big news day. Lots of important news uh, coming down the pike. And, you know, we're your one-stop shop. If you're looking for a daily political news digest, if you're looking to be engaged with some of the change makers among us, well, you know, we, we got your number right here. Um, uh, Cameron, welcome back to A More Perfect Union. Thank you. Uh, and so uh, before we went to break, uh, I mentioned that the Supreme Court wants nearly $20 million in new funds to protect uh, the justices and their homes. Uh, it, you know, when I read this story, uh, uh, I was wondering... Um, uh, if, uh, you know, some of the benefactors uh, that have been taking good care of Justice Thomas and Justice Alito, uh, you know, why uh, they weren't uh, put a little bit on it uh, to, to keep them safe as well. The Supreme Court has asked Congress for an extra $20 million for security to deal with, quote, evolving risk and a change in how the justices' homes are protected. This is according to uh, the office uh, that administers the federal court uh, system. Uh, the office's 2025 budget request for the Supreme Court includes 33 new positions to boost protections for the nine justices as threats against the judiciary have increased in recent years. What do you make of this, Cameron? I think it's a ne- uh, needed and necessary step. Um, we have to have uh, this is both a example of, I think, what the extreme politiz- politicization of, of our country. And as you get more extremists and, and more folks on who, whether on social media, are kind of taking their taking their angst and their positions that they may be able to shoot off on Twitter or social media. And they're taking those kind of taking those to the streets. And we can't have that. Um, we need to have our entire judicial system, some Supreme Court justices on down, including um 
they have to be able to operate and administer the law without fear. Uh, and just unfortunately, with so much information so readily available at the fingertips of, of so many more people. And then I think, quite frankly, with our, the, the political rhetoric that has reached a fever pitch, now you've got people who are who may be willing to take take some of their matters into their own hand or, and be able to to make threats, uh, make not just credible threats online, but being able to show up and find these places. I mean, you can Google Map and Google Earth um, and figure out where almost anybody lives now. Uh, and all it takes is for folks to be able to show up. But we can't have people in the highest court of the land not feeling safe in their own homes, not being feeling safe going to and from work or any public speaking events. Like because I think that is just I mean, they're they're while while I may not agree with all their decisions and 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 I think they're internally in terms of the court, there's a lot of things that they've got to clean up uh, in terms of some of their ethics and, and so forth law. They still need to be able to operate clear and free, free of uh, fear of, uh, of of just some crazy folks or, or folks who got a little information, maybe got a little sauced up and decide, you know what, I want to roll by their house and and do who, who knows what. So uh, I'm in full support of it. I think it is something uh, it's, it's a sad state of society, but it is just kind of the nature and the place that we are in with so much information. We got to put more protection. Yeah, I, I I think you're right. And, and you know, even more than our Supreme Court justices, I just think all public servants should be able to serve, you know, uh, without fear. Um, they also should serve without favor uh, uh, as well. I think I think that's really important. Um, and it's not just us that are aligned on this. Uh, in 2022, Attorney General Merrick Garland tapped the Marshal Service to provide 24-hour security for the justices amid a flood of threats and protests that followed the leaked draft of the opinion that would overturn the landmark abortion decision, Roe v. Wade. Uh, Cameron, do you think also part of what is feeding this um, it, you know, are it's decisions that are coming down from the Supreme Court in this case that are at odds with where the majority of Americans are? I mean, we just saw recently the Supreme Court overturn Roe v. Wade. That's 50 years of precedent sort of out the window. Um, and there's a mismatch in terms of their ruling uh, and where most Americans are at. Or if you look at issues related to, you know, gun control, you know, uh, you know, the, the NRA lobby has had a stronghold on members of Congress on both sides of the aisle uh, for some time now. Uh, but, uh, you know, also, you know, the, the courts have been staunch, you know, sort of supporters of the Second Amendment to the po to the point where it feels like it's above reproach. And so are are are, you know, their their rulings on these issues that make a material difference in the lives of everyday Americans. Is that potentially sort of feeding this culture of fear that's also manifesting in the judges themselves not necessarily feeling safe? Well, I do think that some of their rulings obviously uh, sit at odds with what the majority of Americans may feel on, on some of those issues that you mentioned, what, from Roe v. Wade to gun control and, and the like. I do think it, it goes, it's not just a function of this court, but I think going back to the earlier point of the extreme politicization of our country and to, to the extremes where people are not hearing each other on the inside and you and more and more of, of either side that are on those extremes are kind of being rewarded. But I, I can really trace it back. I think what really was like the straw that broke the camel's back was January 6th. When you have the president of the United States kind of essentially inciting a, a full on riot. And while he's kind of been held beyond reproach, yes, maybe he's been uh, he still hasn't been brought to justice for that. And while there have been several people who have been prosecuted and are doing time, some have been prosecuted, done time and already gotten out. I, I don't think there's been the same level of media attention to really showcase that the consequences of that action. But when you have the, the highest the, the highest seat in the land inciting a riot on our U.S. Capitol, on another on another branch of government, for the world and everyone to see from TV to radio to social media to be able to understand it. And there was not a there was not a proportionate amount of coverage on the consequences there. 
I'm pretty sure that folks are, are probably don't even recognize that that a lot of these people are either on trial, have done time and so forth. So they're feeling more emboldened to be able to do other things. So while I think it, that anger and that angst may be there and that this this particular makeup of the court is handing down decisions that may be at odds with uh, with majority of Americans. I think we've if you look into our history, that has happened before. But to this point. It's really, I think, I, I would point it and, and point a lot of that blame to, to the to the the ugly precedent that that former President Trump set by basically saying, "Hey, you can take up arms against you can kind of essentially take up arms against your government," and he made it appear as if there weren't really strong repercussions. Like the media has not dug in day in and day out and continued to 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 really push the narrative and story of like, no, there was real consequences for the people. And quite frankly, while some of those folks have been caught, it's not like there are thousands of people who've been caught and, and, and paraded in the, in the streets to say, Hey, this is never going to happen again. Mm -hmm. So when you, yeah. you turn that into to the Supreme court, I'm pretty sure they feel the same way. Yeah. I've got to ask you this in about a minute before we, we let you go. Uh, the Dartmouth's men's basketball team voted to unionize and shake up college sports just hours before their final game of the season the Dartmouth's men basketball team voted to join a union becoming the first unionized college sports team in the United States and opening many thorny questions about the future of college sports in about a minute what do you make of this and should we expect a lot more teams to follow suit sooner than later I think uh, I don't expect a lot more teams to necessarily unionize because this is we're still in that fallacy that student athletes, especially D1 student athletes are student athletes. I would say they're athletes, business people who are who the schools would like to parade as students so they don't have to pay them. But I think uh, the band aid over this has been the name, image and likeness NIL deals to hopefully get some of that money. But I do think this is far from over because. Uh, the billions that are made on the backs of, of men and women basketball, I think, in men's football specifically, uh, as as these multi billion dollar sports, there has to be some, there, there has to be some kind of uh, reconciling like come up this, because these students are generating so much money for universities, for the NCAA, and for all these TV networks and all these other partners, and some of them are still scraping by just to be able to afford food and 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 afford something in a cafeteria. So while I don't expect unions to only be the way to go, I do think there is uh, this is another kind of feather in the cap that is that is building is building the narrative on like how students really take their power back and really just like any other American are able to earn earn their actual due and value off of off of what they produce. I'd like to thank uh, Cameron Trimble, former Biden White House Director of Digital Engagement and currently the founder and CEO of Hip Politics Incorporated. He's the host of the Hip Politics Podcast. And so be sure to subscribe uh, to that. And Cameron, we can't wait to have you back again soon. Thank you, man. You've been listening to A More Perfect Union on KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA Talk 1580 is an intervention. When we come forward, it includes you. KBLA Talk 1580, turning pain into power. Power. Tips to help improve your credit score in 2024. Establishing credit is an important key to achieving financial health, but building a credit history from scratch can feel challenging since you need credit to build credit. First, what does it mean to build credit? All consumers have a score between 300 and 850. You want your score to be as high as possible as lenders look at your credit score to make loan and credit decisions. A good credit score shows you have a track record of borrowing money responsibly. Remember, it's never too late to build or rebuild your credit. This segment is sponsored by J.P. Morgan Chase & Company. KBLA Talk 1580 believes in community empowerment through the arts. Thea Chucha Central Cultural is on a mission to transform community in the Northeast San Fernando Valley and beyond through ancestral knowledge, the arts, literacy, and creative engagement. 
The Northeast San Fernando Valley has a population of about 500,000, the size of the city of Oakland, yet it has no bookstores, art galleries, or full-fledged cultural spaces until Tia Chucha opened its doors in 2001. Founded by renowned poet and activist Luis Rodriguez, Tia Chucha's Cultural Center provides a year-round free or low-cost arts and literacy bilingual intergenerational programming in mural painting, music, dance, writing, visual arts, healing art sessions, and healing talking circles. Activities also include Mexica, Aztec dance, indigenous cosmology, philosophy, and two weekly open mic nights, one in Spanish, the other in English. In addition, they host author readings, film screenings, and art exhibits. To express yourself, heal yourself, attend an event, or volunteer, please visit www.tiachucha.org. That's T-I-A-C-H-U-C-H-A dot org. This is a community call to action from KBLA Talk 1580. If you're looking for the most epic place on earth, let's start at the base of a massive waterfall. Then trek through the thick jungle. Then climb to the peak of a snowy mountaintop. Then once you get there, keep going. Because with intelligent 4x4 and 7 drive modes and a Nissan Pathfinder, the search is the real adventure. Available feature. Intelligent 4x4 cannot prevent collisions or provide enhanced traction in all conditions. Always monitor traffic and weather conditions. We knew you'd stick around. This is LA's home for progressive talk radio. Welcome back to KBLA Talk 1580. You're listening to A More Perfect Union on KBLA Talk 1580. I'm Dr. D. Cordelia Corte, and it's about that time. You know what we're talking about? The quiet part out loud. Y'all remember uh, the idea of universal basic income? Well, places across the U.S. are testing no strings cash as a part of the social safety net. Uh, NPR is reporting that uh, a once radical idea got a boost during the pandemic as cash aid without conditions was considered a radical idea before the pandemic. But early results from the program in Stockton, California, hat tip to former Stockton mayor, Michael Tubbs, who's a champion of universal basic income. Uh, Stockton showed a whole lot of promise to this idea, the so-called radical idea. Uh, then interest exploded after it became clear how much COVID stimulus checks and emergency rental payments had helped people. The U.S. Census Bureau found that an expanded child tax credit could cut child poverty in half. That is, until the expansion ended and child poverty spiked. Around the country, from big cities to rural counties, there have been more than 150 basic income pilots and counting. Supporters say it works because people can spend the money on whatever they need most, whatever they need most. This idea is not new, though. T Tony Periwinkle, who happens to be the president of the Cook County Board of Commissioners, says she hopes to prove that basic income works so they can someday go nationwide. Periwinkle notes that the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. and the Black Panthers called for guaranteed income. So briefly, did President Richard Nixon. These days, some tech entrepreneurs argue that cash aid will be needed as gig work, automation, and AI threaten jobs. Periwinkle thinks that cash aid should be uh, a permanent part of the, school, the social safety net, and she wants to prove that it works so it can someday go nationwide. Well, guess what? It can't go nationwide. Pilots like this don't have a chance if we don't show up at the polls, if we don't put in place folks that are willing to give it a chance, as opposed to folks uh, that want to slash and burn and 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 uh, cut up uh, every little piece of the social safety net. Look, there are some uncharted waters ahead, not just talking about politically, but just as mentioned, you know, with the advent of artificial intelligence, the reality is there's a lot of jobs as we know it that may very well be threatened. And we've got to get real creative about how we allow for folks to be able to provide for their basic needs. And this just might be an anecdote, not a panacea, 
uh, not a panacea rather, uh, but an anecdote uh, that uh, we can invest in and uh, hope for the best uh, and uh, perhaps show up for our fellow Americans in need like we haven't before. So here's a little food for thought. You've been listening for uh, listening to A More Perfect Union on KBLA Talk 1580. More when we come forward. A safe place to go loud, loud. A great place for progressive politics. KBLA Talk 1580. Don't shave with that, son. You'll get razor bumps. Nah, pops. I'm good with Gillette skin guard. How long you been growing that beard anyway? You know mama hates it. Yeah, had it since my last wet shave in 77. Got ingrown so bad. Looked like I was growing a patch of new noses. That's why I use the Gillette Skin Guard Razor, Face Scrub, Shave Gel, and Moisturize. So I don't have to worry about new razor bumps or shaving irritation. Gillette Skin Guard, huh? <laughs> Your mama's going to love this one. <laughs> with no fees or minimums and no overdraft fees, banking with Capital One is the easiest decision in the history of decisions. Even easier than choosing Charles Barkley in a pickup game. We'll take Barkley. Ha! Ah, first pick! Sorry, kids. Yep, even easier than that. With no fees or minimums and no overdraft fees, is it even a decision? Okay, here's the plan. Pass me the ball every time. This is banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. See CapitalOne.com slash bank for details. Capital One and a member FDIC. The possibility of lung cancer can be pretty scary, especially if you're one of approximately 8 million current or former smokers at high risk. That's why SaveByTheScan.org wants you to know that now there's a breakthrough low-dose CT scan that can detect lung cancer early, and it only takes 60 seconds. You stop smoking, now start screening. For an easy quiz to see if you're eligible, visit SaveByTheScan.org. It could save your life. SaveByTheScan.org is brought to you by the American Lung Association's Lung Force Initiative and the Med. That was another way I would smoke once an hour. That didn't work either. All that would happen at some point of the day, I would end up doubling up. Other ways that I tried to quit was I stopped buying cigarettes totally. But if I took three puffs off of 15 friends, those didn't count because they weren't my cigarettes and they weren't full cigarettes. (laughs) You know, I went through a lot. Every attempt is part of your story to quit for good. Visit Kick It California today at kickitca.org. Heard any other talk radio lately that sounds anything like this? I didn't think so. You're listening to Unapologetically Progressive, KBLA Talk 1580. You've been listening to A More Perfect Union on KBLA Talk 1580. Let me finish with this. Most likely to succeed. How about forever First Lady Michelle Obama? Okay, let me explain what I mean by this. NBC News reported that Michelle Obama's office says that the former first lady will not be running for president in 2024. Former President Barack Obama has said that he's all in for President Biden's reelection effort. But a question nagging at many Democrats is what role his popular spouse might play. Democrats nervously looking ahead to November, say that they want to see Michelle Obama playing a bigger role in the campaign. Some even whisper about the possibility that she might replace a politically hobbled incumbent on the 2024 ticket this summer, making her a fantasy candidate for members of both parties, albeit for different reasons. Supporters of Republican frontrunner Donald Trump have fixated on the notion of Obama swooping in to replace Biden in an attempt to diminish the president's political viability and stoke the GOP base. And uh, uh, former First Lady Michelle Obama uh, is not taking the bait. In a statement to NBC News, the former First Lady's office tried to rein in the imagination of the right and the left, making it clear that her 2024 plans don't include running for office. Quotes, as former First Lady Michelle Obama has expressed several times over the years, she will not be running for president. That's what Crystal Carson, her director of communication, said. She went on to say that Mrs. Obama supports President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris's reelection campaign. Uh, And so, uh, you know, there are expectations that uh, she will play a role uh, on uh, during the reelection campaign uh, where there is alignment, uh, though uh, a very limited uh, role, uh, because there may be some reluctance to get into the political fray full time, according to some sources. And so, you know, uh, uh, look, 
the former first lady or forever first lady, Michelle Obama, um, is succeeding. Make no mistake about it. Uh, and she wants our country to succeed. Uh, she just isn't interested in being president and uh, doing the, the work to, to make that happen uh, uh, by way of the Oval Office. And so uh, we can move on from this. We can release the possibility of Michelle Obama running for president because she has said now several times that she ain't doing it. Uh, and so uh, let's, let's uh, let that be uh, and uh, move along. Uh, before we, we let you go, uh, we've got to remind you that, you know, we are firing at all cylinders here at KBLA Talk 1580. If you don't know, now you know. KBLA Talk 1580 has released a groundbreaking uh, survey about environmental issues and the impacts of pollution and climate change on our community. Uh, the poll provides unique insights into Black voter sentiment and preferences on key environmental and social justice issues. The results highlight that there's a direct connection between environmental justice, social justice, and civil rights. Equally important, respondents overwhelmingly believe that pollution, climate change, and other forms of environmental harm impact Black, Latino, and low-income communities more than white, Asian, healthy, and coastal communities. And so to learn more about this new survey and our historic year-long climate justice campaign, go to our KBLA 1580 website right now at KBLA Talk 1580. We care about the community. We care about climate. We'll have to leave it there. My thanks to our entire village that helps us to produce a more perfect union each and every day. Our executive producer, Tavis Smiley, our sound engineer extraordinaire, Miles Lowe, our show producer, Robert Battles, and our podcast publishing guru, Odell Bodie. Of course, each and every one of you, we love you. Uh, be sure to get out there and vote. It's Super Tuesday. Remember, don't panic. Organize. Do what you can from where you are with what you have especially the power to vote. I'm Dr. Nicordelia Corte. You've been listening to A More Perfect Union on KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA 1580.